All right. So have you guys heard about this KRC20 token, Nacho? Mm. It's blowing up, like seriously blowing up. Yeah. It's got that whole meme coin energy, but there's something more there. Yeah. Like people are really digging into what's behind the hype. Yeah. And that's key, right? I mean, yeah. anyone who's, you know, been around the crypto space, even casually, has seen, you know, meme coins come and go. Oh, yeah. It's all about the hype. But hype only gets you so far. Exactly. But understanding the underlying factors, that's where it gets interesting. Totally. We're going deep on this one. Charts, articles, you even threw in some Reddit threads for me. Looks like fun. Always got to check the Reddit threads. You got to. Right. Have to. Okay, so first things first, for anyone who just tuned in, what is it about Nacho? In, 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 I mean, come on, it's a crowded meme coin space. What makes this one stand out? Well, you know, it's a few things, but I think the backstory is definitely um, is definitely part of it. Um, we're talking about a token that's inspired by a cat okay. named Nacho, okay. who just happens to be the beloved pet of one of the core COSPA developers, Shy W. Broski. Wait, really? A developer's cat is the face of, like, this multi-million dollar token. You laugh, but it really, you know, this is not, um, this isn't uncommon. I guess not. No. This is something that um, we see time and time again in the crypto space, right? There's this uh, this really powerful dynamic of human connection. Yeah. And people, they gravitate towards projects that have, you know, relatable stories, um, familiar faces. Yeah. It builds trust. Sure. And, you know, even if it starts with something as simple as, you know, a cute cat picture. Yeah. Think about Shiba Inu. Right. 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 Same idea. Yeah. So, okay, I'm thinking, like, Goldfish, maybe he's, you know, maybe he's due for a little glow up here. We'll see. We'll see. But beyond the adorable mascot, right, there's, um, there's the whole fair launch angle, too. And that seems to have really clicked with the nacho community oh absolutely yeah you know this is a project no pre-sale yeah. no early access for you know venture capitalists or insiders everyone had an equal chance to get in from the very beginning right and that is you know it's a huge deal in the crypto world where fairness and transparency are so highly valued for just sure. one of the core principles uh, totally of the whole space and it's interesting too because the numbers really do reflect that enthusiasm, right? Yeah. I mean, Nacho hit a $70 million market cap in like, what was it, three days? Three days. Three days. To put that in perspective, that's like a lot of legitimate projects, you know, with actual utility, they struggle to get even a fraction of that. For sure. After months, months of development of building a team. Yeah. And, you know. And marketing and all that stuff. And marketing, exactly. So, and here's the other thing. And here's the kicker, right? Yeah. All of that growth it happened without any major exchange listing. That's wild, right. This is purely driven by, you know, grassroots community activity. Yeah. Trading through a Telegram bot. It's pretty incredible. It's crazy. You don't see this at the scale. Yeah. It really speaks to the power of, um, you know, of community-driven momentum. For sure. So, okay, let's recap. Right. We've got catchy name, a feel-good backstory. Yeah. You know, a fair launch and a community that is just going bananas for this thing. No wonder people are calling it like the Shiba Inu of the Caspa network. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And speaking of Caspa, I think, uh, you know, it, it's important to understand the underlying platform here. Right. Right. Because you have to understand Caspa, I guess, to, yeah. to really get Nacho. So Caspa, it's a proof of work layer one blockchain. But what does that even mean for someone who's like, maybe this is their first time even hearing about this. What makes it special? Yeah, so when we talk about COSPA, you know, we're talking about speed and scalability. Right. COSPA was designed for fast and, um, importantly, cheap transactions. Okay. Think like right. visa level throughput. Right. But decentralized. Okay. This is like the holy grail that a lot of, you know, a lot of blockchains are, are chasing after, right? And um, COSPA is making a serious play for it. For sure. So faster transaction speeds, lower fees. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty appealing. For both developers and users. Sure. Yeah, for everyone involved. So it's still early days for COSPA though, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a project that is just getting started. And a lot of analysts will tell you it's significantly undervalued. Okay. Especially when you compare it to some of these other, you know, layer one blockchains that have achieved a fraction, a fraction of what it can do technologically. Right. So there's a lot of potential there. Right. A lot of potential. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. Which I guess kind of brings us back to Nacho, right? It's like we're riding this, I don't know, this rocket powered by cat memes <laughs> and like good vibes. Yeah. But like the rocket itself is built on some 
you know, some pretty impressive engineering. Precisely. And that's what makes it, you know, so interesting for um, for investors or potential investors. Right. I mean, you've got this like this perfect storm brewing. Yeah. You got the charismatic mascot, dedicated community and this, you know, fast growing blockchain that's got everyone in the tech space, you know, turning their heads. Mm, totally, totally. But I don't know. I guess we should we should probably acknowledge the elephant in the room here. Yeah. We were talking earlier about meme coins and hype. Right. Is this like is Nacho just a flash in the pan? Right. Yeah. Or is there something? Is there more? You know, does it have a legs for like sustained growth? Yeah. I mean, that's the million dollar question. Right. And unfortunately, there's no crystal ball. Right. But what we can do, we can look at historical patterns. Okay. Look at market trends. Yeah. And you know, look at the psychology of meme coins. Okay. To make some, I'd say, educated guesses. Okay. So. Psychology of meme coins 101 then what like what makes them so alluring to investors even with all the you know the inherent risks I think it's a it's a really fascinating mix of factors okay um, on one hand you have you know the power of narrative humans we're hardwired to respond to stories right yeah. we connect with them emotionally we remember them yeah. we share them and you know nacho has a great story you know it's got the the cute cat the relatable developer the kind of the david and goliath thing going on with the with the centralized exchanges right fighting against the man it's a story that people you know it it resonates especially with a younger more you know tech savvy generation for sure and then you add on top of that the second factor which is community right these projects they thrive on this like this collective belief the shared experience of being a part of something new something that could be you know groundbreaking it's like that feeling of being in on a secret exactly like you're ahead of the curve right exactly and you see that with with nacho uh -huh. he, on twitter reddit telegram like people are are sharing their like investment stories there you go. creating memes building the hype it's it's more than just like buying a token at that point you know mm. it's like joining a movement yeah it's a community and that brings us to the final and this is maybe the most potent ingredient it's FOMO ah uh, yes the fear of missing out it's real when you see a token skyrocketing when everybody around you is talking about you know life-changing game yeah it's very tempting it's very tempting to just say you know what forget it throw caution to the wind yeah Throw caution. I'm jumping in. Jump in head first. Head first. And that's where things can get, you know. Risky. Risky. Yeah. Because while that FOMO can drive those, you know, incredible short-term gains. Right. It can also lead to some, you know, pretty dramatic crashes. Oof. Yeah. So how do you how do you strike that balance then? Like how do you as an investor, how do you navigate this world, this this crazy world of meme coins without getting burned? Right. Because it seems I don't know, it seems kind of scary. It all comes down to due diligence. Okay. okay. You can enjoy the ride, you can get caught up in the excitement, but never let go of the fundamentals. Okay. <laughs> fundamentals. Okay. So like not um not investing your rent money in a cat theme token because everyone on Twitter is saying it's going to make you rich. That's that's a good starting point. Yeah. But um, you know, on a more serious note, due diligence in the meme coin space, it really starts with, you know, taking a hard look at the tokenomics. Tokenomics. Okay, now there's a word I haven't heard in a while. Break that down for me. What are we talking about when we say tokenomics? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So essentially it's it's the economic model of the token. Okay. Right. How is it distributed? Right. What's the total supply? Are there any, you know, mechanisms in place to prevent market manipulation? Okay, so for like for Nacho specifically, we'd want to know like how many tokens are out there? Right. Who, you know, who are the big holders? Stuff yeah, like that. Exactly. Exactly. You want to look for, you know, yeah. red flags, right? Uh, no. Like a highly concentrated supply, for example, where, you know, a small group of, of holders, they could potentially control the price. Right, right. And this information, you know, it's usually, it's pretty easy to find. Okay, good. On the project's website in their white paper if they have one. Right. Or um, even on blockchain explorers. Okay. So let's say you've, you know, you've kicked the tires a bit. Right. The tokenomics, they check out. You're feeling, you know, cautiously optimistic, let's say. What's next? What's like, what's the next step in the process? So the next step is maybe the most important step, and that is figuring out your own risk tolerance. Oh, right. Easier said than done sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you're, you know, you're excited about something that could, you know, potentially like take off. Of course. Of course. But you have to remember, right? Meme coins are inherently volatile 
what goes up can come down just as fast. Yeah. And it is absolutely critical to only invest what you can afford to lose. So no taking out a second mortgage on the house to buy Nacho. Probably not the probably not the best idea. Okay. So, okay, we're coming up on the end of our our Nacho deep dive here. Um what would you say is the like if you had to distill it down, what's what's the big takeaway for our listeners? You know, I think for me, at least, the most interesting thing about this whole nacho thing, it's really what it tells us about the future of finance, you know? Interesting. Okay. We're seeing communities forming around these shared ideals, Yeah. around a sense of humor, around, you know, a cat named Nacho, of all things. Right. And these communities, they're not just, you know, sitting around, they're wielding real financial power. They're disrupting the old way of doing things yeah. and really challenging, you know, our very definition of, like, what an asset can be. It's like we're, we're almost watching, like, the birth of a new kind of financial system, oh, one that's built on, like, memes and, <laughs> and community and, and, like, a healthy dose of irony. You know. Precisely. And yeah. whether Nacho itself, you know, becomes the next Shiba Inu right. or or fades into, you know, meme coin history, the mm -hmm. trends that it represents, I think those are here to stay. For sure. So to all our listeners out there, um, keep exploring. Keep learning. Keep questioning. And hey, maybe, just maybe, give your pet goldfish a second look. You never know. You never know. <laughs> all right. Until next time, happy investing, everybody. <laughs>